So up until now, the robot's been this big tangle of wires plugged into a socket. That changes today. See, in order for the robot to swing freely, it needs to be its own self-contained unit. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Give it wireless controls, battery, structure, wheels for movement. Oh, and some sort of armor and protection because it's gonna be taking a lot of falls and because it will make it look cooler. So I've got an initial model for the frame now. It's got space for batteries, electronics, as well as wheels. On that same point, I've also modeled some wheels to attach the motors. Now you can probably see some indents around their circumference. That's so I can slot in a rubber band to give them better traction on smooth surfaces. Sadly, probably not enough to climb up walls though. And with that, 11 hours of printing, it's all done. So let's see what mistakes I made. Right, so I've got the final part here. Just cleaned it up and did a dry fit of all the parts. And I think I got it right first time, which is a first. I don't know how, but it works. So I think all we got to do now is the assembly and then I'll be finished. Okay, it doesn't look great. It looks less spider, more stealth version of one of those yellow and red push cars from primary school, but it works, so it's fine. Now, I was planning on some sort of armor or protective shell, and I started putting something together to see how it worked. Already with the batteries, I'm not quite sure if it can build up its own weight, as it's far heavier than the test I did last video. So adding any more weight isn't really an option, which sucks, because I think it would be kind of cool. But anyway, it's all ready to test. So let's test it. Sorry to leave you on a cliffhanger, but there'll be a full test as well as a full build in the next video. In the meantime, go watch this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.